Well, I've been working on this uh, exciting collaboration with Russell Poldrek in the psychology department. He's a neuroscientist, and together we obtained funding from the National Science Foundation. The particular uh, paper in question is one that's about to appear in Science. Uh, it is collaborative work with Russ Poldrack, Sabrina Tom, who's an undergraduate working in his lab, and Chris Treppel, who's a former postdoc at the Anderson School. Uh, the work investigates the phenomenon of loss aversion, which is a bedrock principle of behavioral economics. Uh, loss aversion is the notion that losses loom larger than gains when people are making decisions, and it's been used as an explanation for a variety of phenomena. For instance, why people tend to be uh, char uh, uh, require a much larger uh, selling price for objects. Uh, they require more money to sell objects that they've been given than they would have paid to acquire them in the first place. Uh, it's also been used to explain uh, phenomena such as the fact that people are more sensitive to uh, 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 People are more sensitive to increases in the price of objects than decreases when it comes to measuring market demand, or why people tend to demand a, a large premium to invest in stocks over bonds. Stocks have a much higher uh, average expected return, but uh, people require that difference in order to make up for the fact that they have more volatility, so there's a greater possibility of losing money on stocks relative to stable return on bonds. Loss aversion also explains why people tend to be risk averse in situations where they face the possibility of gaining or losing money. For instance, if I offer you an opportunity to uh, uh, play a bet where we flip a coin and heads you win, say, $110, tails you lose $100, most people would decline that bet. Uh, most people, in fact, would require the gain portion to be about twice as much or more than the loss portion. So they would say no to that gamble until the amount they stood to gain was about $200 uh, if they were exposing themselves to a $100 loss. So this is a very robust phenomenon. It's been found in a wide variety of settings, both inside and outside the lab. It's been found uh, in the behavior, trading behavior of children as young as five, capuchin monkeys. Um, and so it seems to be a fundamental feature of the primate brain. So we began our investigation trying to understand the neural physiology of loss aversion, and if we could see what loss aversion looks like uh, on the brain. Uh, so we uh, did an experiment where we recruited 16 uh, mostly undergraduate students, folks around the UCLA community, uh, and we asked them to make a number of choices concerning gambles in which they stood to gain or lose money. The gain amount ranged from uh, $10 to $40. The amount they could lose ranged from $5 to $20, and so we gave them these 50-50 bets. 256 of them, uh, and their task was simply to say, okay, would you accept this gamble for real money? And we told them that we would select three of their choices for real. So if they said, yes, I'd accept this gamble, after they were done making their choices, we flipped a coin, and if it came up heads, they'd win a certain amount of money. If it came up tails, they'd lose a certain amount of money. If they said, no, I wouldn't like this gamble, then nothing would happen. So they made these decisions while we scanned them in the fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, tracks the flow of oxygenated blood, which follows the electrical activity in the brain. So it gives us a sense of what parts of the brain are most active when people are making these kinds of decisions. And what parts of the brain are, uh, uh, their activity correlates with the amount that people stand to gain or lose. One possibility that we entertained is that there could be two different systems for how people process mentally losses and gains. In fact, a number of people have speculated that maybe one reason why people are so aversive to find uh, losses such averse, so aversive is uh, because they uh, somehow trigger a negative emotional reaction, an apprehension or fear that might be mediated by the amygdala, which is a part of the brain that tends to respond to these uh, when people are feeling fearful or apprehensive or perhaps the anterior insula, which tends to be more active when people are physically uncomfortable or smell something that, uh, that they find disagreeable and has also been associated with uh, un unpleasant kinds of uh, uh, economic choices in some, in some studies. What we found is it wasn't the case at all. What we found was that there was one system in the brain that mediated the, the uh, processing of rewards, uh, and it's a primary uh, reward circuitry mediated by dopamine starting in the midbrain with projections to a center of the brain, really the re primary reward center called the ventral striatum with projections to the frontal cortex, medial uh, frontal cortex. 
And uh, you know, it's the same region uh, responding to potential gains in the decision-making context when gambling is, is the region that responds to so when you give people money or you give them uh, something they find uh, especially physically rewarding like cocaine or you present them with uh, pleasant-looking uh, faces. Uh, that same circuitry is more active the more people stand to gain. But here's the interesting thing. That same circuitry is what gets turned down the more people stand to lose. So instead of two separate systems, it's one system that responds positively to the amount people stand to gain and negatively to the amount people stand to lose. Furthermore, what's really interesting about what we found was for the first time we saw loss aversion on the brain. That is, we found that that reward circuitry was more sensitive, about almost twice as sensitive on average, to the amount that people stood to lose compared to what they stood to gain. So it really was a picture on the brain of what loss aversion looks like, and it's all mediated by a unified uh, reward circuitry, a representation of value that's all put together in the brain in this, this uh, same, uh, same circuitry. Uh, the final thing, really, I think that the coup de grace in this paper was we looked at individual differences in the brain's sensitivity to losses relative to gains, and there we found a very strong uh, association between how sensitive an individual's brain is to losses relative to gains, and how risk averse they were when choosing amongst those gambles. So the people who are much more sensitive to losses relative to gains on their brains were also exactly the same people who turned down most of those gambles unless they had an exceedingly high gain relative to the amount that they could lose when facing those 50-50 gambles. So it's a very exciting study that takes this very important bedrock principle of behavioral economics. Indeed, one of the uh, main uh, foundations of prospect theory for which Daniel Kahneman won the Nobel Prize in 2002 and actually shows what the neurophysiology of that principle looks like on the brain. So we're very excited about it.